what's up everyone welcome back to tease time i'm tj thank you for tuning in uh, today we're gonna do or we're gonna get started on some electrical like the last electrical that i still have to do uh it involves my water heater and this is just uh the tank level uh, monitor system when i eventually have my water storage tanks but it'll also be able to tell me my uh propane tank uh you have your fresh your gray i'm not doing a black and then also your battery uh but in order to do that you need to wire everything up and there's also you know you have your uh, water heater switch your on and off uh, for both the pump and the water heater uh, so you have to go through we have to get that wired up I am using uh, relays for uh, the water pump just to be on the safe side because this switch right here for pump can handle up to about 7.5 amps but like if you do use like a higher power a water pump it could be 10 amps it might be too much for that it can mess up your uh, display unit uh, so I just like to do things, just make sure that I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to throw a relay on that. And I'm also going to throw a relay for uh, the water heater just to be on the safe side. Uh, just so you don't have to have a second thought about it. Uh, but in order to do that, you need your relay, you need your power source. And I did already re I already ran wires for uh, all that stuff. Uh, it's going to live behind the wall here. Uh, let me get this wall paneling uh, the rest of the way off so you I'll expose that. Alright, and this is what I have for uh, the wires. I already ran. This is a ground. This is also a ground right here. Uh, and the ones we're worrying about today is going to be uh, for, uh, well, we're not going to do the water heater quite yet, but like you have your sea level. That's our uh, tank monitor system, water heater, water pump, and then I have for uh, heating pads. Uh, so for the heating pads, uh, that's going to be like a direct line going straight to my uh, fuse panel up here. Uh, but that'll be a later date that's when uh, like we have the water storage tank so we actually have water lines ran and that's just a precaution just to keep stuff from freezing up uh but like right now i just need to figure out exactly where like those uh face plates will actually live i'm thinking of something like so like here for that and then the hot water heater display right here will live something like so and this is just to control like the temperature so you can turn it on and off uh, but it's nice to just have like as much information as possible and just want to make this like a clean install uh, so with this wall panel like I'm gonna make sure that I can have it so that way I could take it on and off if need be without like too much effort because the water pump is gonna live on this beam right here uh, so I do have like holes drilled I have them like foam sealed up for right now until I could get to them at a later date uh, but that's where uh, the water pump will live on this beam. So we need to have like electrical running to that. And then behind all this clutter back here is the, the water heater. Uh, we have to figure out a wire situation for that also. I'm thinking about drilling like through like the beam. But probably like a lower drill, lower hole like down in there. And just run it behind like or up against the, like the wall paneling on the other side. But I plan on putting like some wood beams just to give it space so I could get like my actual plumbing and electrical to run behind it because the shower will eventually live like here. Uh, so like the wire and the plumbing needs to run along the wall and then that will be blocked off once the shower is in. You won't be able to see that. Uh, but yeah, we're just like in the middle of a, a lot of <laughs> projects. And right now, if you could tell, I'm working on my bench bed situation. I ran out of uh, maple planks, so we're waiting on that. That'll be a later video. We're getting there, uh, but that's nice. I'm not gonna ruin like what I have under that plywood quite yet, uh, but it's coming along nice. It's actually like functional how it is right now with like the pieces I'm still missing and waiting on, uh, but like we'll get to that at a later date. But I just wanted to run through and just show you like relays and stuff like that. Uh, so on the sea level, that's what I'm using right now. Uh, the model I have is the 709 HP 3W monitor system and that entails your uh, battery your fresh water your gray your black and your propane and then you have your on and off for your water pump and then your hot water heater so with that on the back side 
right here, we have these pigtails that plug into the back right here. And then you just have to find the corresponding uh, pinouts for uh, like all these wires and stuff like that. And uh, these green tabs right here will be, uh, this is how you tell the level of your uh, your water system. Like I said before, I'm not using uh, the dark or the black tank, the gray, or not the gray, but the, the black tank. I'm not using that. So I'll end up just using uh, two of these right here. And then these black wires, those go to ground. The blue will end up going to the blue on this pigtail right here. And then open up to the middle. Put this down for a second. All right, and then for your wiring, like I already went ahead and found like what I'm gonna actually use uh, for uh, the wires, but like this is what we have right here. Uh, for pigtail A, which is this one right here, uh, your red is your positive. Uh, the black is ground. Uh, the blue right here, like I said before, go see your uh, your tank senders right there. That's the blue. And then we have our white gauge or white wire right here. This is our pump indicator. And then the white blue is your uh, heater indicator. Uh, so the heater indicators will turn on these little lights right here. There's a little green backlit light so that way when it's on, you'll know it's on because those lights will be uh, lit up green. Uh, so we have that, that's pigtail A. And then for pigtail B, uh, this is where the one where I went and had to figure out like exactly how, because like the instructions aren't the greatest. Uh, it's a traditional, uh, like a, a three-way rocker switch. So you usually have your power, your ground, then there's like a common, but like you can wire it differently where like if the common is like the negative or the common is a positive, uh, that's what we have right here. So for the common, I'm saying it's the purple. That's going to be the middle switch. I'm going to send a 12 volt constant to that. And that would be on the purple. So purple will have constant 12 volts. That's that wire right here. And then, well actually, let me just start from the top. The, the orange, I'm going to block that off because this is something we're not going to use. Or I don't need it anyway for the setup that I'm about to use with the relay. Uh, but like cut that, block that off because that will get 12 volts uh, when it, the rocker switch is in the opposite position. Like when I turn on, let's say that's for the water pump. When I turn the water pump on, the orange won't have power. But then if I turn it off, it will have power. So uh, I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, leave that blank blocked off if you're using like a relay like I am. But you just don't want that to short out on ground. So just make sure you do that. So we have that taken care of like I said the purple is gonna be my 12 volt constant that's gonna be a direct supply uh, from my circuit breaker right there that's gonna go and all these are gonna get tied I have like a couple that are gonna get tied together uh, you have your uh, like I said on pigtail a we have a red 12 volt that's gonna share with the purple and that's gonna share with the gray so that's gonna be a, the gorilla gray is gonna supply to your hot water heater so the gray will come in with the power, and then once you turn on the switch, that'll send the 12 volts out to your hot water heater, turning it on, and activating it, and making sure that you can actually use it. So we have that, and then for my yellow, that's gonna go to the pump relay. So this is where the relay comes in. Uh, so right now, when you send this, when you turn on the switch, let me actually put this down. All right, so when you hit the f switch for your pump, let's say the pump, you turn on your pump, the pump will take its power because you have all these ran together. That'll be sending a 12 volt out. So the yellow will be sending 12 volts out. So you can use this. This is 12 volt. Get a better angle. Uh, so this is 12 volt out going to the water pump. So like you didn't want to use a relay, if you had a water pump that was less than 7.5 amps, you could directly run this to your water pump, which will turn that on. But just so that for peace of mind for me, I'm going to use a relay, a relay right here. I have it already marked water pump. Uh, so with this for the water pump, the water pump is going to get a direct 12 volt coming straight from my distribution block up here. We already have it ran. The wires going there. So that's going to go 
12 volts going to come in from the, the breaker, the little uh, fuse panel over here. And then it's going to go directly through the blue. It's going to go to the water pump. But for when I activate the switch, it's going to get 12 volts set to this, which is going to close the switch and make that contact and make that switch close for the pump to get its power. And the black is going to be ground. So you could do uh, black or white. could be ground either or. But just want to make sure the, the switch power is going through these skinnier wires right here. And the larger gauge wires that you have here is going to be the feed for your water pump. And all these are going to be fused. I'm going to use a 10 amp on this for the water pump. Uh, for the other ones, I'm going to use like a 7.5 or 5 amp uh, fuse for those. So that way everything is safe. And if you are running a your uh, switch directly to your water pump you want to make sure you have that fused for a uh, 7.5 amps so that way it's, it's a safety for this also just so you don't don't mess this up you don't want to mess this up if you blow a fuse you can replace it cool no problem but like don't mess this up make sure you fuse everything so uh, the power that's coming in i'm gonna have that fused for a uh, 7.5 amps or even like a 5 amp fuse or something just so like that will pop before uh, this will pop so everything's going to fed through uh, the one wire where I have the, the 12 volt through the red. The purple for our uh, 12 volt constant for our rocker switch on here. And then also the heater power. We're going to tie all those together. Those are all going to get 12 volts coming from the same source. We're going to do a, a 7.5 amp on that. And then from there, everything will branch off into our triggers. So I'm going to even use for our... Hot water heater, that would get the heater out would be the green yellow gauge. So the green yellow 18 gauge will be for our water. This is going to be our signal going to our hot water heater. Uh, so we're going to use that through the relay through the same system. Just make sure our hot water heater has our direct power coming in. Direct power going out, which will only be uh, switched on once this sees power. So uh, that's going to see power. And then the grounds, I'm going to shear these same grounds with, actually, I'm going to share, they're going to have a similar ground, but then for the monitor system itself, uh, that ground I'm going to keep separate. I'm going to shear that when I eventually, uh, or actually these don't need to be uh, ground, these could go onto the chassis. Uh, so that, now we're going to ground everything together. I'm going to throw everything on one ground and then we should be good to go. And then, like we said, like, I don't think I said it before, but uh, the water pump is going to have a ground. Uh, the hot water heater is going to have a ground also. So just make sure you take all that into consideration. But the most important part of this, uh, you just want to make sure things are fused so, like, you don't break. So if you do mess up, like, start off with a small fuse. Like, when I was trying to check, like, for, like, the rocker switch, like, I put in a 3-amp fuse just to, like, play with it, just to make sure to see, like, where the power is coming from. That or you could do a voltmeter, but I use the the three amp just to try to see like if the orange was putting out power or if that was going to be a ground. So I did pop that playing with fire, but like that was a short amp, a small amp fuse, so like it didn't cause any issues. Like the fuses saved whatever would have happened if that was a constant flow. Uh, but yeah, just uh, take your time and like the instructions, they're pretty straightforward except for like when I got to this part right here about the common and then the terminal one and terminal two. That was a little confusing for me, but we got it figured out. Uh, so like I said before, like these lines right here, are what I'm connecting everything to right there. And I'll just, uh, I'll snap a picture and I'll put that in there so you can kind of like look at it just so you see where all I have all my lines like running to just for like the power anyway, the power and then for uh, the grounds. There's not a lot of grounds. There's uh, there was one ground on the pigtail A, but then for uh, the relays, you could have those share the same ground because they need to be ground out. So that way, when it gets a signal to send power to uh, the device, the pump or the hot water heater, it needs that. So uh, let's go. I'm just trying to keep moving while waiting on things to show up. So like this is going to be a piece by piece. Um, I have a full install coming at a later date. But like I might as well just do something while I'm waiting for stuff to show up if I have time to spare. So that's what we're gonna do, so enjoy. Oh, and I forgot for our propane signal, that's the green wire on pigtail A. 
is the, the green wire. That goes to the signal on the propane tank. Uh, there's a separate gauge that clicks onto the propane tank where it sends a signal to this. So I'll be able to know the level uh, without actually having to go look at the tank. Everything will be displayed on this, which just makes life easier for me. Uh, I'll tell you those creature comforts of just laziness, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, but like that will take care of that. But uh, let me get into uh, wiring up the relays. I feel like that's probably like the most important, well, the, other than like the tank level uh, sensor panel stick on here. But like that would be at a later date when I actually have like my tanks are actually installed. Once I order the correct size, because I do have the incorrect size ordered. It's just like it's, it's too perfect of a fit. Just it interferes with fittings. Uh, so I have to reorder some more uh, water storage tanks. So like whenever I get that situated, uh, we'll get into like this. But like the most important part of this is just so you don't damage uh, your display unit here is making sure you uh, use uh, relays so that that's what I really want to cover today. Just making sure I get like the relays wired up. I was like once that's figured out, everything else is pretty easy, self-explanatory. Just uh, connect the dots at that point. Uh, but yeah, let's get to uh, wiring. And like I said, they're going to share a 12 volt. And that's going to be the C-level wire right here is where they're going to be sharing on the pigtails. And then for our hot water heater, where are you? Or actually the water pump. Like I said, with the water pump, the water pump that has this power, it's going to my little uh, fuse distribution block breaker box, whatever you want to call it. That will go straight to... The bigger gauge on the relay right here. So I here on here you as you can see you have your 85, 86, 87, you have your 30A. If you pop those off like so, 87 to 30. So uh, 30 will get your 12 volt coming from your fuse panel. That'll go here, and that'll be the red wire. And then coming out will be going to the pump, the positive wire on your uh, water pump right here will be the blue wire. And these are your triggers. So uh, this black wire, you will ground that out. And then once you hit the power on the switch from your uh, display unit, that'll send 12 volts to this, closing this, uh, these two and let these send power straight through so uh that's about it so that's what we're gonna do and then mounting location for this i'm thinking about putting all the relays i'm gonna put them like right there it will just be easier to get to like if anything does happen i can just uh pull the panel back a little bit drop those down and take them out and put in a new one uh but like this they're overrated for what they are they're 40 amps each uh, it shouldn't see more than like 10 amps like depending on the water pump you're using about 10 is about like 10 12 is like a big boy so uh you should be fine with this where this should be like nothing for these relays so these will last a long time and always keep extra relays around just in case So it looks like we have everything wired up. We have our relays. Uh, come to find out one of the relays was bad or is bad. It's uh, this relay right here for the hot water heater. I uh, put this other relay, my spare relay, in here just to te check to make sure it was getting uh, its 12 volt directly from the fuse panel. Uh, hit the switch. It was closing, but like something was happening inside where the power wasn't making it out. Uh, this right here is where uh, it will go into the hot water heater at a later date. I just put this on here just to check it. And then the, the blue and white wire, that's uh, for uh, the indicator light on the front of it. So like when you turn it on, like that green light will light up so you know that the water heater's on. And then the same goes for the water pump. You hit that and it does the same thing so you know the power is getting through. 
Uh, this is just to be a safeguard for uh, the panel itself so it doesn't see too much voltage or like especially like when the water pump is running and uh, the hot water heater is doing its thing. Uh, but yeah, this is what I want to do. I'm going to change this out. I'm going to take that out because that's bad. So that's going in the trash. And then I just have like the little uh, 30 amp one I had laying around just to check to make sure. And then actually, let me actually put this like how the wires will live. It's going to look neat, nice and neat. Like once it's done, uh, this right here is just all the grounds together. This is just like the test. I'm going to clean this up. And then I have like my uh, meter on there my multimeter uh, so you can also check that way so when you turn on the pump we're gonna turn on the pump right now but like the pump is getting its constant 12 volt right here on the red as you can see uh, that's coming from the fuse panel and then on the blue this would be going out to the pump like once you actually turn the switch on as you see there's no power but then once you hit the pump you turn that on the green indicator comes on and then it's getting the voltage that it needs to go to the water pump uh, so the only thing we're doing is you're just dropping it down for that high duty cycle to be on the switches themselves it's not going on a switch it's actually going straight wires straight to the fuse panel uh, to prevent any issues so uh, we're making progress. This isn't complete, but like that was the hurdle that we have to get over. So everything else is just like plug and play at this point. When I have the water pump in, I just have to run the, the one wire, uh, positive and negative, to that pump. And then just the same for the water heater. Also, there's a black and a red wire. Uh, the black will be ground. The positive will be the red. Uh, so that's pretty much self-explanatory just to how to hook that up. Uh, so that's like the easy part of doing this install like this is like the hard part is just making sure you uh have all your wires situated to where they're gonna go and just make sure like it's clean because uh, you could just throw it in there have like a rat nest of wire but like just make it look clean make it easier on yourself if you do have to fix anything like having to do like the relay just being able to like to unplug it and then just plug in a new one and just to change this out so right now to change that out just have to unscrew that throw another one on and that's swapped out Versus it being like hidden down in here and then also just trying to make sure that the panel is uh, easy to take out if I do have an issue, like I just had an issue, uh, to change that out. So all I have to do is like get the panel out and I can kind of just even get my hand probably in between to just pull that off and then just put throw another one on. But to unscrew it, I probably have to get like a little bit more room, but it's in a good spot. It's an easy spot and it'll be high out of the way because uh, I will have water lines running behind uh, in this panel, uh, the shower head will probably be like up here. So we have water lines running straight down. Uh, so even like just gravity in general, uh, if water splashes these, it shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't short anything out. That should just like drip down. Uh, but there shouldn't be any water in the inside the van. <laughs> that would be like the main thing when I get the water stuff situated. We're going to just make sure it's dry. And then we also have a drain for the sink. The sink will live here. There'll be a drain to kind of just go down to one of those holes uh, for the the gray tank. Am I saying that right? Yes, the gray tank. I'm going to have a fresh in a gray tank eventually. And bada boom, bada bing. It's in. It's installed as installed as I want it to be for today. Uh, right now we have everything plugged in. Uh, this is the water heater. You turn that on. You get the green light to indicate that. Turn it off. Turns off. Same thing with the water pump. Press that indicator light. I did a, a little bit of rewiring for the indicator lights. I put them on the, the relay side, not the actual like appliance side, like with the, the water pump, uh, just so like there's no risk of them getting like too much amperage and uh, messing something up. So just make sure you put it on the lowest, lowest, lowest amp pole side. And that's our trigger side. Uh, so I got everything in here. It's cleaned up. I still have to wire some. I have this wire right here going to the ground. Uh, just temporarily, I don't have a uh, black wire with me right now, so I'm going to redo that. Uh, but just for right now, like the hard part is just making sure like the relays were in and that stuff is functional. So everything else will be a plug and play. Like when we get to our water heater, that's a, a red and black wire, a positive being the red wire, negative being the black wire. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Just uh, connect those to their correct corresponding spots and locations. And yeah, it'll go pretty simple. And then I still have to run the wire for uh, the propane level sensor or sending unit. 
Uh, we have our heating pads. We got to send the wire through the floor for that. And also when we do our uh, tank level sensors, we have to send the wire through the floor for that. Uh, the black I'm going to ground to the chassis on the outside on the bottom. So that doesn't need to go through. Uh, but like I have to run like a wire coming in to the cab and eventually just pick a location down there where I'm going to drill that hole. Uh, but just want to make like a little bit of progress today, even though like I'm waiting on stuff, I'm kind of like at somewhat of a standstill, but I just want to make some kind of progress. So I appreciate you checking me out. If you like what you're watching, uh, like and subscribe, make sure you give a thumbs up and then I'll see you next Wednesday. So till next Wednesday, remember Rome wasn't built in a day. So some progress is better than no progress. Peace. TJ.